Gentlemen, welcome to La France Gymnasium for tonight's NJCAA Region 21 contest with the visiting Bunker Hill Community College Bulldogs and your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. The NJCAA Region 21 and Bristol Community College are committed to the ideals of good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play. We ask that all fans, coaches, and players show respect for the opposing team, game officials, and each other before, during, and after tonight's game. Thank you for your cooperation. And now, for tonight's starters, first for the visiting Bulldogs. At guard, a freshman, number Melvin Suevis. At guard, a sophomore, Jesse Tavares. At forward, a freshman, Javante Edwards. At forward, a sophomore, Quincy Taylor. At forward, a freshman, Joseph Akinobo. And now, for your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. At guard, a sophomore from New Bedford Volk, Stanley Freeman. At guard, a sophomore from New Bedford High School, Chad and Gia. At forward, a sophomore from Shea High, Dominic Santos. At forward, a freshman from Apodiquit High School, Joe Lopes. And at center, a freshman from New Bedford, TJ Henry. The Bayhawks are coached by Brian Fernandes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please rise for the singing of our national anthem from our own Lucy Cabral. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could ask if we could please, if we could please have 24 seconds of silence for Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna Bryant, and the seven victims and their families who lost those loved ones this past Sunday. Thank you.
right, welcome everybody to Bayhawks basketball here on FRC Media. I'm David Cardozo, alongside me is Megan Holden. As we're getting ready to tip off here, and Megan, um, this past Sunday, tragic events in, um, in California, lose, um, the loss of one of the NBA's great legends, great um, ambassadors to the game, losing Kobe Bryant. When I heard the news this Sunday, I was this so disoriented, I couldn't believe it. And um, It still feels like a bad nightmare that just waiting to wake up from. Yes. Such, so tragic, and to lose his life so young when he was about to establish himself in the second half of his life, second half of his his career, 41 years old, so young, and to lose his daughter, who he was mentoring, who he was kind of re, kind of got rejuvenated as far as in the basketball realm, as that ball is way off. And um, great to see the, all the great tributes, another great tribute here tonight. In the corner, and Gia for three, no good. Definitely a uh, legend that lives on. Uh, I know as a kid, we were always, when we threw out the basketball from a three or a mid, uh, mid shot, everyone used to say Kobe. So he definitely impacted the game of basketball in a ways that will live on forever. And that ball coming off, and you know all these young men out here grew up watching Kobe, so you're going to see a lot of that mama mentality here tonight between uh, Two of the better teams in Region 21, and this has been a rivalry over the year, over the last uh, several years. And the semi-regional finals, uh, Bunker Hill actually kicked out uh, Bristol last year, so definitely a payback game for Bayhawks. See if they can take advantage of the opportunity. Yeah, there's a lot of different faces. Bristol, Bristol had a huge win this past Saturday, and I, Megan, I get a chance. It's been a while since I've been on a sports, you know, like um, on a sports bench or near a sports bench, I, could, I had a chance to sit behind the, um, the Bristol bench and you could just feel like the intensity. I felt like I could have went in the game. Like I was like getting so fired up and the guys are rallying around each other and. Yeah, I'm not um, sure if they, they, they need you, but. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I could give them five minutes. Nice pass there by Freeman. Underneath to Henry, scores it. First basket of the game. Henry came off a, a great game last uh, couple days ago. Definitely uh, looking to build off that tonight. They're going to need his presence in the middle. I wonder if Angio is going to change his game a little bit. Stolen away by Freeman. Freeman to the rack. Not, oh. Can't get it to go, but Angio yeah. is there to clean up the mess. Speed Angio, he got uh, hit that last game with a technical. I wonder if he uh, changes his game a little bit. Yeah, and like I said, he missed, he missed Saturday's game. Their leading scorer, Chad Angio. Stolen, and it's going to be Bristol basketball. And you can feel the energy in this crowd here on a Tuesday night, turning up on a Tuesday. <laughs> I see Freeman. what you there. Yeah, Freeman kicks it to the corner. Santos loses it. In the corner is Angia, knocks it down. And that's what they... They missed last game. That's what they missed last game, but you know what? Bristol had a big win against Roxbury. They missed... The three-point shooting of Chad and Gia, but Bristol had a huge overtime win. Three-pointer, knocked down by number 23. Knocked, stolen away. Definitely that was Marvin Erdonata on the earlier shot for, for Bunker. I think I've, uh, a friend, Power, came in. For I was told to call him pro. pro. Just call him pro. He's definitely <laughs> he's I'll tell like you, a pro last game. I'll tell you what, who's Mr. Solid is uh, Joe Lopes, number 10. He does all little gritty things. He's a leader on the court, and Gia, that's his spot. The three, nice. drains it home. Well, it definitely seems like he always has his eye on the ball, ready to make a play. Definitely does. Chad and Gia knocks down a three. Chad and Gia is just a pure shooter. You, you just know it's just a matter of time before he's going to knock it down. He has such a calm, cool stroke. Erdinata. I know, but earlier this season, he just, it just seemed like one three after another. They definitely have to respect the... Another Aaron yeah. shot, rebounded by Lopes. And Gia to the middle, going to put it up. No good. Rebounded by Jamori Copley.
Going to the rack strong. And going to get fouled by Hendry, I believe. And going to the line right now is Laku Howard. Looks like the Bayhawks got a little bit of size advantage this game. Not too much, but a little bit with Henry inside. It's a definite starting lineup from last week. Well, not last week, or a couple games ago, a couple days ago. Well, you're talking about a team that was just coming off 40 days and 40 nights of not playing a basketball game. So a lot can change within that time. But this is the Bristol lineup that uh, that you want to come in, Boy, I mean, that uh, you want to that you want to have out there. Nathaniel is coming in right now, giving some uh, bulk on the inside. And Nathaniel played some big minutes this past weekend on Saturday against Roxbury. And um, definitely showed a lot of energy, a lot of hustle. Had a key basket in overtime. He actually uh, started. He started the, the Yeah, he started, he started last week. And that ball out of bounds. Freeman trying to find pro. Couldn't find the mark. Bristol has the early lead, though, 10-4. Want to thank our Facebook audience for joining us out here today on this January Tuesday. Super Tuesday, as we're about six days before the Super Bowl. Which uh, I'm less excited about this, this season. No, no. Going to the hole, Coakley can't get it to fall. I'm sorry, not Coakley. Laku Howard. Coakley is their leading uh, scorer. He's kind of a one-man show for this team, averaging, I think, a little bit of, uh, over, over 20 points. Everybody else, I believe, is uh, 10 points or under for Bunker Hill. Nice job by Bayhawks, keeping up the intensity on defense. Even though uh, Bunker Hill was able to get the rebound there. And Gia gets it down to go and puts it up oh. and in. Look at that. And Gia can just score all the ways he, all the ways he wants. Nate G getting it done. Nice pass there by Angia. And Nate G's been working hard. You work hard, you will get rewarded. And another basket for him. Look at this. He definitely seems energized this game. Ready to uh, put that energy. Maybe he will. Ready to go. Saved up from uh, last game. Bristol. Bristol playing some good defense early going. Doing back to back plays. This, they left this home crowd getting into it. Everybody's yeah. playing energized. Back to back plays. They. Uh, they allowed the offense rebound, but they had not let up defensively, setting up real quick. That ball, ooh, almost sailed out of bounds, and he does step out of yeah. bounds. Another turnover, and this Bristol faithful getting into it. Every time these two teams to get play together, play against each other. You can feel the rivalry. Yeah, you can just feel the intensity in the crowd. You can feel it on the court. It's like Valentine's Day came early with all the love. <laughs> you and that Valentine's Day. Just, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get your heart. Aww. I'm gonna get your. I'm gonna make an arts and crafts. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant chocolate heart. You can keep. You can keep the arts and crafts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Freeman deep for three. Ah, oh, pro. Pufon gets it. Lopes looking for it under the basket. Profong for three. Can't get it to fall. Going back the other way is Bulldogs. Nice job by Ng to get back there. No, no uh, fast breaks under the rim. Bulldogs with the basketball. Crowd very much into it. And the, and the Bristol bench. Shot deep in the corner. No good. Rebounded by Joe Lopes. Nice shot by Lopes there. Freeman looking to push. Up to Chad and Gia. Just way. A little bit high. Yeah, way too high. Nice thought. But Imagine if you would have took that and just dunked it. The crowd would have went crazy. 12-4, Bristol with the lead early on. Like they get it inside. Erdinata can't get it to fall. Tipped. Nice fight there by Nathaniel. Looks like uh, Bayhawks going to let him set up. Here's Freeman. Gets in the corner. And Gia for three. Going to be short this time. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. Big difference of how uh, they came out this game, the Bayhawks versus last game. A lot more energized. Way more energized. Way more put together. I mean, they're coming off a big win this past weekend at home. 
Oh, nice. Oh, good job by Nate G to get in there and front and front the uh, the Bulldogs player. Good hustle play by Nate G. And they, I guess he, I guess he tied him up. It's going to be Bayhawks basketball. So possession arrow in favor of the Bayhawks. Oh, they're going to call a foul away from the ball. Who they call it on? Moving screen. So going to call a moving pick away from the basketball. Right back in. Uh, Bulldogs favor. Coming up on 13 minutes to play. Driving to the basket, losing it, kicking it back out. The three is good. And G just has to get, get to uh, number three a little quicker than that. Knocking it down. Janai Jones for three. 12 nice. 7. Lopes catches it at the free throw line, kicks it back out to Pro. Good defense here by the Bulldogs. Getting inside, Lopes pounds it in. Floater no good. Well, we got a couple of nice uh, no look passes. They get inside. Nate G gets physical down there. I give him that. Three pointer is good. It's like Bunker by Hill, Justin but, Brooks. The Bunker three pointer. Bunker Hill got a couple three point shooters on his team. Yeah, that was a pretty shot. That was beautiful. Bulldogs pull within two. Lopes for three. Lopes can't get it to fall. Usually doesn't shoot those jumpers out there. This game is going fast. Ooh. Look at he split. Oh, poor kid asked me when he's okay in the crowd. So the ball goes flying. Ten, twelve. We're just getting started. Twelve minutes to play in this first half. Only twelve, ten, though. It is, it as energized like as intense this game is, it seems like there should be a lot more points out there. Definitely. I feel like a. Uh, oh, drain. Nice. Well, as I said, I was gonna say it seems like a defensive game tonight, but. Another jumper by Jones. Bucket Hill's not getting up and easy. Twelve, twelve. Mm. Both teams very active on the defensive end. Be interesting how uh, Bayhawks respond here. It seemed like they would start again and go in the beginning, but Jones, that's his shot right there, right there in the paint, about 12 feet away, going back the other way. Three-pointer is good. Another three-pointer by the Bulldogs. You gotta respect the three-point line play they've been shooting. Jesse Tavares. Bayhawks again, a little sloppy here. Fifteen to twelve. Stanley Freeman with the basketball. Stanley Freeman has been their facilitator. I mean, he's been their quasi point guard. Freeman for three gets it to go, but he can do that. Stanley Freeman. And it's big, big uh, shoes to fill with McCarthy. McCarthy was one of probably one of the school's best guards in history. And it's not easy shoes to fill, but Freeman has stepped up nicely. He I sure like. has. We're going to take a break here. 15 to 15. We're deadlocked. We'll take a break here. We'll be right back. Get, 
legitimately hot in this gym. That's why it's a pressure cooker. Seems like it's going to be a very good game. These teams know each other very well, and there's a lot of history here. But these are two totally different teams, two totally different mm -hmm. rosters, a lot of roster changeover. I feel like you can still feel it intensely, though. Oh, yeah, that doesn't go yeah. away. I mean, North Carolina and Duke can play each other for 100 years. The rosters change, the faces change. But that rivalry, that intensity, it's always there. that history never goes away. Going back the other way, and a nice little lay in there by Jordan Todd, six foot one freshman. He's made a couple good plays for them so far. He definitely has. Aggressive offense. 17 to 15, they swing it. Profong, three pointer, way off. Rebounded by the Bulldogs, going back the other way. If you're just joining us, both teams in gray. Well, yeah. That's a three pointer. Jordan Todd can't get it up high for the rebound. You think they uh, Freeman. You think they talked to each other before the game and plan this? Like, hey, uh No. <laughs> but Bristol in the gray and white. Bulldogs in the red. Three pointer by Angia can't get it to fall. Like on Tuesdays we wear gray. <laughs> Jumper in the corner. No good. Loose ball. Read about it by who else? Joe Lopes. I mean he just puts his head down, puts his hard hat on, goes to work underneath there. I feel like both, uh, both Bayhawk teams got that. You had to have that for, for a winning team. One player just does all the little things. Yeah, Joe Lopes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had a big game. He, has, he, he probably had his best game in his young Bayhawks career this, um, this past Saturday against Roxbury. Roxbury, a good team, and Bristol with a big win. That might could catapult the rest of the season. We'll see how they do here tonight. Definitely. Lopes. Gets it knocked away from the elbow as Hendry can't get the bounce. Definitely speaks volume after all the changes this team has uh, has faced from last season. Bristol in zone. Kick it back out. Todd kicks it to the corner to Tavares. Inside. This is a good matchup. Hendry and... Nice battle there. Hendry and Quincy Taylor going at it. I feel like that's, an even, that's a fair matchup right there. Both, both, uh, both athletic bigs. Exactly, both tall athletic builds. Same size, inbound pass. Santos went for the steal, couldn't get it. Tavares in the corner, kicks it up. Todd, Tavares from the, from the wing, couldn't get it to fall. Loose ball, another opportunity. Oh, wow. Uh, third offensive rebound. It's like deja vu. Yeah, it is. Todd for three. Can't get it to fall. Another oh offensive God. rebound. Oh, and a block <laughs> nice there. Nice by Lopes. Blocked by Angia. But the Bulldogs get it right back. Oh, nice take. Oh, goodness gracious. I mean, he had to get it out of four or five times. They had to get it eventually, right? Seems like uh, the women's basketball team might have uh, might have uh, gave some rebounds lessons yeah, to, yeah. Uh, <laughs> to the men's team. Non-lessons. <laughs> Lopes from the free throw line can't connect. But I'll give them this. They definitely are, are good at resetting defensively after they get the rebound. Todd for three. No good. Santos nice. kicks it out. And Chia going up and slams yeah. it home. I was scared he wasn't going to make it. <laughs> Man, I'm not I, sure. didn't, I didn't know Chad and Chia had hops like yeah. that. 19-17. It looked like he was going for it, but I was a little scared there. Melvin from the top. Deep three. Another offensive rebound. Get it boxed out. Mm -hmm. Get to get to the ball. Seems like they just like, just like the Bristol, yeah. just like the Bristol women. Not boxing out, just touching it. Volley, like well, they're not. They're not getting to the loose balls. Mm -hmm. They're not getting to the 50-50 balls. They're getting out hustled by the Bulldogs. Well, I was saying earlier, the biggest difference is they they reset more fa more fastly, more fast than the women's team did. So they're not giving easy opportunities. But you have to get the defensive rebound. Well, that too, but they're getting, um, they're letting the Bulldogs get second and third chance yeah. opportunities. You can't do that like no. against a team like this. No, you, eventually they're going to make it. It's like some, uh, both teams are going to their bench here. Good to hear some noise. Good yeah. to hear some passion from our Bristol, Bristol faithful. This gym a lot noisier. I wonder if sometimes than what we're accustomed to. I wonder if um, that ever disturbs really works for the shot. 
Melvin Suavis hits both free throws. We have a substitution. Number 22, Quincy Taylor is going to step out. Number 13, Nathan Haptum is going to come in for the Bulldogs. Bulldogs run their offense. A little bit motion. Freeman. I like Bayhawks are moving around. Freeman pulls up from the free throw line. Can't get it to fall. Loose ball. Nate G gets it. Bulldogs, I mean, Bristol will reset. Here's Freeman. Driving. Kicks it. Fading back. And G up a three. And he's been cold lately. I like uh, how the Bayhawks, they're not, it doesn't seem like they're rushing anything. They're setting up. Yeah, they're, being, the best shot. they're yeah. being a little bit more patient. This game is going to be a barn burner. Suave is, and they're going to call steps. Mm -hmm. travel, call, travel call on Melvin Suave is. And Gia definitely uh, cooled off a little bit from the hot spot. But you, know, you know that he can get it back like that. Yes. We're going to take a little bit of a break here, here on FRC Media. And we'll be right back with Bayhawks basketball 21-17. Bayhawks Trail will be right back after this. I always knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know how or when. Bristol gave me the flexibility to balance work, family life, and the things I love to do. I was able to transfer and get a bachelor's degree in the field I am passionate about. Bristol helped me so I can help others. Working as a mentor and a coach, I know I'm making a difference. And I'm able to show my kids and others the value of a college education. It's never too late. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. All right, welcome back to LaFrance Gymnasium here in good old Fall River, Massachusetts. Bayhawks trail by four against Bunker Hill Community College out of Boston, the Bulldogs. 21 to 17. There's been uh, no love loss between these two teams. Coach Nakrama, Nakrama Jones, he, is, he has built a damn good team over the last several years. The Bulldogs have been a force to be reckoned with in Region 21. Making the national tournament on a couple occasions. It seems like they both uh, they built both defensively and offensively. They they have it all. Always have an athletic team. Always have a quick team. Freeman driving to his left and nice. scores. Nice hard, tough drive there by Stanley Freeman. Nice quick driving step. to his left. That was a quick step. Yeah. Nice. Stolen away by Freeman. Oh, almost got the save there. Yeah, Freeman looked like he got pushed out of bounds there. A lot of contact. Crowds a, a, uh, definitely thought he got, definitely thought he got shoved. Freeman's such a hustler, though. Yes. He's, he goes. I mean, he goes after it. He gets. He's, he's able to get into the passing lanes. He's got active hands. I like how he's moving on to the next play, though. Not trying to get too, not getting caught up too much on that on that call. Not non call. Oh, that's a leader. Bristol in zone. Crossover. Tavares. Oh, nice little fake. But oh, Ooh. turned into a pass and then cleaning it up. Nice cut there by number two. That was number 13, Nathan Haptum. Setting the screen as Lopes gets knocked off the ball there. Freeman finds Santos. Bulldogs sticking with, with the Bayhawks right now. Bulldogs are all over, all over the Bayhawks like a cheap suit. <laughs> Deep three by Freeman, drains nice. it home. Stanley, three men. Freeman's definitely picking up where uh, NG left off. He's uh, feeling, feeling it right now. Freeman can get it going from the outside. That miss by Tavares. Rebound, you got a rebound. Yeah. They're tipping it. Oh, but they gotta Freeman just, going up high for it. They're tipping it, they just, gotta grab, they just gotta grab it. Like Freeman did. Yes. Freeman, like a locomotive, going to the basket, nice. up and under move. Beautiful, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Stanley Freeman with the deuce. Nice adjustment there. Three-pointer way off the top of the backboard, but going up high for the rebound. Nice. And they're going to call a travel on Haptum. Momentum's definitely on uh, Bayhawk's side. Let's see if they can build up for a big lead here. Still a close game, only one point. It definitely feels like Bayhawks. Why does it feel like the Bayhawks like, has like 40 points? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's only 24. 
They barely have 40 points combined. This is a defensive game. Yes. Both teams playing good defensively. They're not giving the other team anything cheap. No. Santos goal, that's an errant pass. Suavez by himself, going against Freeman, and scores it. Even a fast break, I mean, is contested. Freeman did a good job at contested, but that was a quick, nice little yeah. nifty move there by Suavez. Look, like look at Tavares playing defense on Freeman. Freeman for three. Can't get it to fall. Nice couple dribble moves by uh, get, get some room. Suavez gets into the paint. Nice dish and a yeah. slam. Slamming it home is Quincy Taylor for two. Bayhawks are lacking a little bit around the rim. Got to uh, gotta increase intensity over there. Well, that was a nice little drive and dish yeah. by Melvin Suavez. And Gia, short jumper. Can't get it to fall, and the lid is on the basket for Chad and Gia right now. I think he should start uh, driving more. Nice crossover. Attacking yeah. to Suavez. Misses Quincy Taylor with the putback. And it's, it's a five-point lead for the Bulldogs. Nathaniel's throwing his body down, down in paint. Came in with the dribble moves to try to get some space. And Gia. Oh, nice. Threading the needle. It's uh, uh, Gia going in between two defenders, putting it up in the paint. If, you, if the three's not working for you, just take it to the paint. See so one easy one go in, hopefully you can turn things around. Yeah, take it to the rack. 29-26, both teams going back and forth. It's an up and down, up and down defensive affair, too. Coach Brian Fernandez, we talked about it. In his first year taking over for a longtime coach, the only coach in the new inception, the re new the reincarnation of the Bristol Community College men's basketball program. And I was talking about earlier about Freeman stepping into McCarthy's shoes. That's even bigger shoes for the head coaches. Delu had so much success here, well respected, uh, won a lot for the team, turned his uh, franchise around. Yeah, you're talking about a guy over 170 wins. Mm -hmm. um, was, was love he, he, repeatedly, by the players. Repeatedly took the team, you know, to, uh, to regional tournaments, regional finals. Won a won a pair of won a pair of uh, state championships, the MCC AC tournament, which is now defunct. There is no more mass tournament. Um, what a couple won a couple of those titles last year. Bristol Community College had their highest ranking in their history. They got up to number four in the country. Well, they had those three star players: they had Winbus, Vega, and McCarthy. Just they just couldn't. Uh, I think Win uh, Winbus. Was they able to play in the playoffs and yeah, and Josh Bayhawks Winbush, who was a fell short. who was a big time player last year. All those players Miss, uh, missed the tournament. You wonder what could have been. Uh, Josh Winbush moving on to Division Two. All those players end up getting scholarships and moving on to better things and for their careers. Yeah, the men's basketball team. The men's basketball team has um, pushed a lot of players to play at the next the next level at either Division Three or Division Two, and um, have had a lot of good players. Some players even overseas. Come and go. Some players even made it to overseas. Yeah. Quincy Taylor at the free throw line. Drains the first one. 30 to 26, 342 to play here in the first half. This one has all the makings of a good one here tonight. Looks like this one might go right down to the wire. It's gonna get intense. It's gonna go back and forth like a mother and daughter argument. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a tomato at you. <laughs> 31 to 26, five point lead. Santos crossing over, driving to his left. Gotta go baseline now. Ooh. Finger roll is Looks like blocked, a blocked by Taylor. Suavis, boy, he's quick. Quick all the way to the rack. Strong. A little bit too strong. Rebound by Nate G. Nice pass by Angia there. And quick to get first one to the, to the basket. Missed opportunity. Couldn't find him. Here's Freeman with the ball. Well, he's been getting frustrated out there. Ooh. Well, they're playing him, to they're playing him close. They're not giving him no space. Yeah, Bunker Hill has a lot of quick players. I mean, they got guys with some quick feet. 
I think it's the Nike shoes. <laughs> Freeman gets that ball knocked away. Another turnover by Bristol. Bristol, oh. at, Bristol at times getting sloppy with the basketball. Santos almost had a steal there. And they're going to call travel. Right. Seen it from a mile away. Had better eyesight than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, I have glasses on. Are your eyes still dilated? 31-26. Um, Here's Freeman. Freeman being got up by Suedas. And Gia driving to his left. He likes driving to his left. Puts it up. No good. Off the glass and then rebounded by Quincy Taylor. And Gia can't get discouraged. Keep going to the basket. I'm sure he will. He's, he's a steady shooter. Inside. Another missed shot. Bulldogs are missing a lot of shots down there, actually. Seems like bat, both teams are going back and forth. It's all about defense this game. Yeah, off, offensively, both teams not... Hit or miss, literally. Not making shots. Yeah. Freeman, stutter step, jumper, no good. Another missed shot by Bristol. Seems like they, should just, they need to pass the ball more. It seems like when they just go to one-man show, they struggle. When they yeah. stop passing the ball, yeah. they get open looks. Yeah, lately it's been one shot and done. Driving to the hole, putting up with his left, no good. Rebounded by Lopes. Coming back the other way, and Gia stops and pops, jumper. And boy, he just hasn't been able to buy a bucket. I think he should have waited a little bit there, reset. I don't know if that was the best shot to take a contested mid-range. Catching it, Taylor in the paint. Jumper no good. Both teams going back and forth with misses. Both teams have a lid on it right now, 31-26. When these two teams get together, usually a lot more points. To be fair, neither defense not giving them anything easy. Santos for three. Can't get it to fall. Holy cow. <laughs> Coming up on a minute to play in the half. Five-point lead for the Bulldogs. They lob it in. All over Nate G into Quincy Taylor. Puts it up and in. And Gia goes to the basket. And they're going to call a blocking foul on Taylor. And then Gia will go and Gia will go to the line for two. Might have been an restricted area there. Hopefully well, his, feet, uh, his feet definitely weren't set. Yeah. Seems like uh maybe this will get uh and Gia uh back. Was it microwave bad? Yeah. We're gonna heat him up a little bit. <laughs> get the get the Bayhawks going again. Something. And Gia makes the first free throw. 17 fouls for Bristol. So the uh, Bulldogs are in the bonus. They'll be shooting free throws here on out. And Gia makes both. It's definitely been a physical game, although the refs haven't been, uh, been letting them play too much. They just gave, um, I was going to say, they just gave the Bulldogs a point. Now, they they'll, now, now they'll make it. Yeah, now it's 28 to 3. Yeah, I'll take it. 33 28. Going. Ooh, nice little pass there underneath. Can't get it to fall. Taylor sticks with it. Can't get it to fall. Another rebound by the Bulldogs. He just ripped it out of Lopes' hands. The floater in the lane. Another rebound by the Bulldogs. And he'll go to the line. Taylor gets fouled. Four offensive rebounds on one sequence. Bristol can't grab boards. Mm -hmm. Bunker Hill getting all, getting all their bricks. Going to build a house. That's what I mean. The Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> the Bulldogs, similar to the um, the women's the women's Bulldogs basketball team, not really making shots, not really stellar offensively, but they you, able to get to the line. You give, yeah, you give a team third and you know second, third opportunities. You go to the well too often, eventually it's going to break you. Well, it seems like it has, uh, since Nathaniel came in for Henry, it seems like they have let up a little bit uh, around the rim. Uh, Nathaniel's not able to get the rebounds, boards like Henry is, even though he's uh, more, more built. He's a big body, just yeah. a little bit slower foot. Not as good hands, I think. 
Here's Angia. Driving to his left. Puts it up with the left. A little bit too hard. Tipped. Bulldogs with the basketball. Coming up, the three-pointer. It's good. Pulling up is number one, Calvin Sang. At the buzzer, Freeman. And the Bulldogs at the end of that. At the, end of that, at the end of that first half, sneakily pulls away up to 10. Well, they took advantage of uh, the, the Bayhawks not scoring. And they were able, even though they, they didn't get easy looks, they were able to uh, put the ball in the basket, just fight for it, get the, get the rebounds. Kind of been the story of this whole night. Uh, yeah. Going back, to the, going back to the women's game. So anyway, so uh, it is halftime here at LaFrance Gymnasium, 38 to 28. Stay tuned for a second half action in just a little bit, friends. We'll be back. All right, welcome back, everyone, on our Facebook. Bristol Community College Athletics page, our live stream. Welcome back. Getting ready to start the second half, and Megan, 38 to 28. Not a high-scoring first half, but definitely a good defensive first half, but Bristol allowing a lot of second chances on the boards. Even though it's on a nine-point game, this game feels a lot closer. I, I still think this can go down to the wire. And knowing these two teams, they have a history of uh, entertaining us and taking us down to the wire. And who are some of our leading scorers at the half? Well, for the Bayhawks, it was Engia and a Freeman show. Engia had 14 points and Freeman had 10. And for the Bunker Hill, it was a three-point uh, I mean, three stars. It was Melvin Suavis and Jesse Tavares and Taylor for ten point with ten points. Okay, so for, so mainly for for the Bulldogs, it's been three guys getting it done for them. Jesse Tavares at eleven, Quincy Taylor at ten points, and nine points for Suavis from the point guard position. Definitely a more team effort, spreading the ball around. A little bit more of a balanced attack, but not really. Going to the hole, losing is Todd. Quincy Taylor, he's kind of been the inside force, and just, just like that off the bat, Bulldogs are on the board, up 12. We're getting underway here. Second half action from the pressure cooker, LaFrance <laughs> Gymnasium. Well, it'll be interesting to see how. Lopes whittles his way to the basket off the glass and in. Definitely be interesting to see how uh, things change on the inside with Henry back in here. Lopes. In the paint, that was a working man shot. Suavis dumps it down to Taylor. He can't hold on to it. And Bristol needs to get things going defensively. They need to start forcing turnovers. Start getting out on the break, because right now their offensive, their, their half-court offense has been kind of stagnant. I mean, let's just face it. I just think they just got to start passing the ball more. There's, yeah. there's a little more, there's, in the, early in the first quarter, they'll move around more. They're yeah. kind of more. It's definitely kind of gonna get, definitely got to get more people to touch the basketball. Freeman, that pass gets tipped, and then a turnover. That pass was a little forced there. Turnover ensues. Here's Melvin Suavis. You want to watch and see how lightning quick that guy is. He's got a lightning quick first step. Taylor gets collapsed on, kicks it back out to Todd. Todd, up and under, can't get it to fall. Well, he can make those tough shots. We saw that in, uh, in the first quarter. Let's see if I Ngia, NG, short. I was, gonna, I was just gonna say if Chad and can Chad Ngia get his shooting stroke back. Tavares gets it to the teeth of the defense, floats it up there, no good. And Quincy Taylor definitely over the back there. I think that's when things started going uh going south for the Bristol when Ngia started getting cold on the court, so did the whole offense. That's for sure. Chad and Gia came out hot, and since then, Freeman, uh, he's probably made one shot from the field. Yeah, Freeman stepped up a little bit, but he's uh, been trying to get back to facilitating. Oh, Dominic, Dominic Santos. I think he was looking for TJ Hendry there, and that ball just sails out of bounds. He need to get back to playing with the poser instead of rushing things. Suavis works his way to the basket, and I believe he's going to be fouled by either NG or a Hendry. I think uh, Hendry might got a little bit of an arm there. Suavis, I mean, he's so quick, and he takes the ball to the rack with no fear. He's a little bit undersized, obviously, from the point guard position. 
under six feet tall, but man, he can get to the rack. Well, Bunker Hill been taking advantage of that too, going inside quickly and uh, getting quick fouls. They had, yeah, it's, I think Bayhawks had seven fouls. Yeah, they had seven seven. or eight fouls yeah. in the in the first half, and yeah, Bulldogs definitely been getting to the line. But I think it's just um, Bulldogs are definitely the quicker team. I think the quicker, more athletic team overall. Yeah, they definitely have the athleticism. Because uh, Bayhawks just have to quickly react and sometimes they don't have enough time and have to force a foul. They swing it. They you know, where those rotations are getting they're getting to their shooters. They are definitely uh, closing out and getting to their shooters for sure. That that Bulldogs defense in the corner. Oh, oh and then Gia that rolls yeah. out, but the rebound by Nate G. I like what I just <laughs> saw there. Keep passing the ball, getting good looks. Pick an open man. <laughs> That's going to be frustrating from, for Nangia, but Nangia, Tavares for three. Calmly sinks that one. What a stroke. Jesse T for three for the Bulldogs. Look how quick the Bulldogs are to the basketball. AG, oh, NG, oh, that's a foul. you got to call a foul there. I thought Nathaniel had a good patience there. It looked like I'm not sure. Yeah, he had a nice little fake there, and Suave is over Nate G. Can't get it to fall. Santos, you gotta oh, look up. Have, gonna be too NGA late. Gonna be. He hit Dominic Santos, he waited, he waited way too long there to find Ngia. And Gia was all alone for an easy layup. And seems like he just couldn't get control of the ball and uh and Gia missed his opportunity to get back. I think he one. had control of the ball. He just he just hesitated. Going to the rack is Tavares with no fear. And again, another foul there by the Bulldog. I mean by the um by the Bayhawks. Bob is now in uh, double digits. Yeah, just just as far as he's had a quiet, sneaky good game. I like the I like the Nikes. It matches it matches the. Oh my God! You and these sneakers. <laughs> I think it's a important part of the game. <laughs> is it really though? It is. It is. Forty-six to thirty-two. It's all in the shoes. And just like that, you wouldn't think it, but it's a 15-point lead. The Bulldogs creeping away. Getting nice. it inside to Lopes and going to stay here. That was a nice find by Pro trying to get it inside. Uh, Bunker Hill just quickly responded. Yeah, Bulldogs wanted it, wanted it to be off uh, Lopes, off the, Bull, off the Bayhawks, but Bristol's going to keep the basketball. Looks like the refs are talking about it a little bit right now. Oh, going to keep it. Bayhawks basketball. Now Freeman will inbound. Bristol will set up their inbound play inside. Lopes. Nice play. And he's going to get the foul. I hit in the head a little bit. I thought that was going to go in the way he adjusted. Joe Lopes, a little bit of an undersized uh, postman. I feel like he makes up for it with strength, though. He's very uh, physical. Yeah, he's def definitely very physical. Definitely very fundamentally sound player. Definitely a very heady player. Just one of those tough, hard-nosed guys. One of those guys that you love him. If he's on your team. If he's on your team, but he's just frustrating if you're going against him. Those are my, some of my favorite type of players. Yeah. But definitely, I seen Joe Lopes on the bench the other day, inspiring, you know, inspiring teammates, keeping guys' heads in the game. Always has words of encouragement. Definitely a leader out there on the floor. Always making an impact, no matter if he's on the court or not. I think he lacks up for his lack of lack of athleticism, lack of uh, size, lack of size from height from a height standpoint. But definitely makes up with it. Oh, I think Booker was out of bounds. And then, yeah, yeah, I think he stepped mm -hmm. on the line. I'm talking about Joe Lopes. He's one of those guys that just, like I said, gets to. He's just a hard worker. He's gonna he's gonna outwork you. And that, that showed on Saturday against Roxbury. He was one of the key components in that victory, and they needed, they needed, um, they needed his contribution without Chad and Gia going back the other way. Tavares so quick, and then the putback by Melvin Suavez. Well, we talked about it a little bit when the first game back in 40 games that it looked like they were going deeper in the bench, and they're definitely going to need more contribute, uh, more contribution from their uh, from their role players, and it looks like they have stepped up the past couple games. Down inside, Nate G. Can't get it to fall. 
Going back the other way, pushing it, Suevas. And I think they're going to call a foul. They're going to call a foul on Freeman with a push. Freeman doesn't like it. And they're going to call a push. And again, another foul. Even though this is a high intensity game, the refs are, refs are pretty much calling everything. Yeah, refs definitely are, um, wouldn't say they're letting them play, mm -hmm. as they say. Keep on uh, making sure this game doesn't get too physical. Yeah, they don't, they don't want it to get too out of hand. Referees make it a tight ship, and that ball's nice stolen by, by Hendry. Freeman, back to Hendry. Hendry back out, jumper is good. Let's see if Bristol can get it going now. They're going to need T.J. Hendry. I was a little worried. They looked like he got the ball to Henry a little late, but Henry is still able to make a play. No, Freeman, uh, T.J. Hendry, he can make that little short, little 12 to 15-foot jumper. That's for sure. Bristol within 13. Suavis catches it at the free throw line and then loses it out of bounds. Nice hands by Henry. He able to poke the, poke the ball out there, and it went off of Bunker Hill's shoe. And, um, and, Megan, this is like... Um, Almost replicating the women's matchup prior to this game, um, the women's uh, Bayhawks team, I who just like who just kept staying around and just couldn't just couldn't fight back any further than what they got. Lopes at the free throw line, the elbow couldn't make it. Rebounded by Hendry. I feel like this these two teams are playing more closely than the scoreboard shows. Bulldog, Bulldogs are just capitalizing off Bristol's mistakes. Yes. 11 on the shot clock. Stanley Freeman will inbound. And oh, nice, nice, nice play, play there. Him. Nice heads up play. Nice pass there by Freeman. Hendry doing a good job to get open and a quick shot. Bristol down 11 within striking distance. A lot of time left to go. This crowd getting into it. Bristol bench into it. Bristol definitely going to need up. The, Need, they're going to need to turn up the defensive intensity, get a couple uh, turnovers and quick scores. Oh, oh nice, nice play there by Freeman. Freeman. Nice block. Gets it out to Chad and G. Ooh, Ooh, what do you have in there? And they're going to call a. They're going to call a foul. And they're going to call a foul on the backcourt. Like NG was sent up for another dunk. Yeah, I thought he was going to go. Definitely thought he was going to go slam that one home. Bristol, you don't want to get too careless with the basketball. Lopes kicks it back out. They're all over Angia. And Gia, and Gia oh, nails nice. it. Nice. Hand in his face, he's still able to make it in. That's my, that might be the, uh, the one that gets him going. Bristol cuts it to single digits. Under 14 to go. You can feel the intensity in this game right now. This crowd loud and proud. Even the coach Fernandez is clapping. <laughs> coach Fernandez is intense. Oh, I'm beating everything. Driving. Tavares. Three on the shot clock. Three-pointer. No good. Oh, nice. Get the rebound. You can feel the momentum shift. The pressure cooker. Nice pass by Freeman. Oh, Henry can't get, get it to fall. Bounce. Small miss opportunities like that can just Again, turn over. Yeah. I look back to the women's game when the, they had so many opportunities to get back into that one. And just missed it. You can't miss those bunnies. No. Suavis. Bristol. They're forcing the Bulldogs deep into the shot clock. Tavares again. Oh. Slit in the wrist. Oh, it's mm -hmm. stolen. Ends up in Tavares' hands. Another quick layup. And Freeman Jesse Tavares, he's a one-man wrecking crew. Freeman fell asleep a little bit there. And that's what I mean. Too many lapses in play. Mm -hmm. Too many lapses in play for Bristol. If I was Bristol, I'd call a timeout here. It seems like momentum starting to shift back to Bunker Hill side. It's just key things like that. You had the steal. You had everything you wanted. Hendry misses the layup on one end. They and then get a layup on the other yeah, end. Yeah, they make a layup on the other end, get a steal. Another easy basket by Tavares. Back-to-back -back points, and all of a sudden it's a 13-point lead again when you had a chance to cut it to within seven. Plays like that. And Gia for three. It's up, another foul. Loose ball on Bayhawks. It's going to be a loose ball foul. It's going to be on, uh, I think it's going to be on TJ Hendry. Seems like Bayhawks are just getting caught up in the last play. They just need to have forward, forward vision and just keep going. Just focus on this play, making the best out of this play. 
just, it seems like they're a little bit in, too much in their heads right now. Making mistakes. Yeah, they're just making key mistakes at the wrong times. Both teams getting up there in fouls. Five team fouls for the Bulldogs. Four for, for Bristol. Bristol in 2-3 zone. They definitely are forcing the Bulldogs to work for it in their half-court offense. Tavares gets it to number four, goes in for the score. A little too easy there to get to the basket. That was Javante Edwards. Bayhawks are pushing it now. Freeman going all the way to the rack nice to a swooping line. show, Lopes. Nice cut there by Lopes. Nice find by Freeman. Definitely a nice find there by Freeman. Freeman's a good facilitator. Tavares in the corner. Rebounded by TJ Henry. Gets it stripped oh, away. Pro with the back. And I believe it's going to... They're going to call a... They're going to call a jump, and it's going to be Bristol basketball. Bristol within 13. Bristol got to do a better job just of keeping their eyes open and securing the ball. Seems like... Uh, Bunker Hill is sneaky, and they'll get their hands in there. Yeah. Let them. Forcing a lot of those uh, jump balls. Freeman. Oh, I stepped out of bounds. Oh. Right now it seems like corner awareness is not, it's, it's not here. Just the little, just the little things, little right? Little things, yes. Stepping out of bounds. Getting the ball ripped away from you, missing, missing little bunnies, missing layups. Just little, just little lapses. Suavis drives and dishes back out into the corner for three. No good. And I believe that's going to go off. It's going to go off the Bulldogs. Thought it might have went off Joe. Yeah, I thought Lopes was pushed over there trying to get the rebound. Key possessions now. Who's going to step up for Bristol? It's going to be this man right here. Here's Freeman. Well, they brought the vet. They brought more experience in with Santos. They get it inside. Hendry uses the glass. Nice. Good job there. Nice job there by Hendry. Hendry's having a quiet, nice, uh, nice game. Staying composed, doing things on both sides. Well, he's definitely got good body, body control, good body awareness. Good job to avoid the defender and put it up off the glass. Use the window. Suavis for three. Melvin can't get it to fall. Loose ball by Lopes. Nice Lopes, that's a nice. Oh, uh, thought he was going to get it there, but he couldn't. They keep missing NG on that fast break. Lopes had the right idea, just not enough air underneath that one. And they're going to call travel. Looks like Bayhawks got another break. Let's see if they can take advantage of the opportunity here. And they're going to call a travel on Alcanoba. See if they can get it back to single digits. Yep, they get a start over again. Get it to within single digits and then. Keep cutting away. A lot, yeah, cut, keep cutting away. There's a lot of time left in this game. You don't need to get it all in one swoop. Freeman feeling the pressure. Santos underneath. And Gia pulls up. Can't get it to fall. TJ Hendry try to reverse it. Oh, goodness gracious. Gotta be, gotta be careful. Yeah. And Gia going to the rack. What is going on right now? Seems 12 like on the shot clock. Anything. Yeah. Bulldog just playing tough defense yeah. in the ha in half court. Freeman going to the rack. Going to draw the foul. See, I thought when you, Santos went to the basket, I thought he had a nice shot, but he passed it up to Angia for, for a three. I think you got you just got to take you got to take the easy bucket and start trying trying to get the home run play like you were saying earlier. Yeah, you get to cut into a little by little, and I want to see Bristol start taking the ball to the basket, start forcing fouls, start putting pressure on the defense, drive to the basket. Definitely, the the refs are calling it this game, so you got to take yeah. advantage. Have guys have guys crashing the boards, have somebody cutting to the basket. You got to get into the paint. I said, keep going, get, keep getting it to Henry. Henry, just keep bouncing off the glass. Got to get it inside to Henry, and Staley Freeman's going to start slashing. Yes. So eventually, they're going to start collapsing on him. And it opens more space for Angia if you, yeah. you want to pass it in. Out. Dri drive and kick. Eventually, they're going to, as Freeman keeps dashing to the hoop, they're, eventually, they're going to keep collapsing on him. And it opens up space. Yeah, guys are going to be cutting to the hole. Someone's going to be loose on the perimeter. 
Going all the way to the basket. Nice block there by yeah, Henry. Yeah, nice block there by Henry. I believe he got a piece of it. And then a foul in the backcourt. Looks like a... And they're going to call it on Suavis. Bunker Hill is not letting up no more fresh breaks. And not letting, uh, not letting no easy buckets for... for Time on the floor. Nine minutes and 38 seconds to play in this one. 55 to 46. Bristol has to cut it to within nine. We'll take a break here. Right here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks broadcasting network. I always knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know how or when. Bristol gave me the flexibility to balance work, family life, and the things I love to do. I was able to transfer and get a bachelor's degree in the field I am passionate about. Bristol helped me so I can help others. Working as a mentor and a coach, I know I'm making a difference. And I'm able to show my kids and others the value of a college education. It's never too late. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. Welcome back, everybody. The France Gymnasium, home of your Bristol Community College Bayhawks, home of the Bishop Conley Cougars. Look at all the banners, Megan. This has been a... Kind of like we're in Gillette. A, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> you always got to take it to the extreme. There's more banners in here than Gillette. Okay, I should have said. You should have said the Boston. Garden. You should have said the, the Boston. Garden. Yeah, you should have yeah. said this is basketball. You should have said the Boston Garden. No, a I lot of champion, a lot of championship teams over the years. This is a team. This is a a high school, a school that has um, been pretty big in athletics the last couple last couple of decades. You can see the championships in hockey. And I mean the conference, Tennis, the conference championships, and basketball, everything. all different kind of sports. Yeah, we're talking about championships. This kind of feels like a playoff game a little bit. Yeah, I mean these two teams could most likely face each other Called in the game. in the, in the regionals when it comes to postseason play in late February, early March. I mean, these two teams could definitely face each other. They faced each other last year, as you alluded to earlier, as Freeman misses the uh, the free throws there. Only a nine-point lead. Bristol's right here. But it seems like they're much further away than a nine-point lead. Seems like this is haven't, the little things haven't gone their way. They just need to get momentum back on their side. Suavis for three. It's good. That's, that's a, not how you do it. That's a backbreaker. Yeah. Man. Every time Bristol pulls within single digits, just like the women's game, Megan, yeah. every time Bristol has pulled, has pulled to within single digits or within striking distance. Bunker Hill just makes a play. Yeah, Bunker Hill just makes a play or a big shot. Or Bayhawks turn it over. Or some, yeah, something of that nature, something that just, you know. I feel like we just could, we could have took our last recording and played this game. We could have, we could have probably made it we went home. <laughs> <laughs> and another missed free throw by Freeman on the front end of a one and one. Nice. Going to the rack is Suavis. Boy, how does he get that burst? He gets to the rack, but he just finishes. I mean, the guy just finishes. The Bayhawks have no, no answer for that burst. He just comes right at you. But the ability to finish at the rim. Yeah. Stay on your toes. Freeman swings it. Santos got to pull that shot. Three pointer. It's nice. good. Nice. Santos telling him right to the head. Looks and like he got a little piece of his hand. And again, just like the women's game, Bristol will not go away within 11. With a bench, you're definitely into it. Santos, I mean, Freeman out on Suavis. Definitely. Bunker Hill's taking their time here. Less looks like less the less. looks like Bristol and Man. Todd kicks it back out. The floater by Tavares, no good. Nice Rebound by Lopes. Not letting them going inside. Freeman, oh, nice drive to the oh, basket. Nice. Yeah, and G in the corner, but still able to get the foul. So. Had G into the corner, but I like I like him going to the basket be there. Yeah, I, th I thought he. I like how we cut. I like how we cut to the middle to get into the paint and draws the foul. Seems like the more sure thing to get a foul in this game than yeah. a three-pointer. Stanley Freeman has been, he's been struggling from the free throw line the last couple games. Well, his average. See his average. First free throw, another free throw miss. He's averaging over 80%. But the last couple games, he really has... Um, Maybe, He's really struggled. Maybe it's the rush from the 40 game, 40 game break. No, they oh, had to go. Game, they've 40. had a couple games there since Melissa. 
Melissa. Within 10. Okay, Daniel. <laughs> Under eight minutes, uh, Melissa. <laughs> Let me make it. <laughs> Trap it in the backcourt. Bristol trying to put that pressure. Oh, nice. So by Lopes got a piece of it, and Gia's got it. Seems like all Bayhawks got a piece of that for a second. Bounced around a little bit. Boy, it would be something if Bristol could steal this game away. They've been, they've been trailing this whole game. And, uh, and for another turnover. Yeah. I say, That's I was, what I mean. I was going to say, I think I was going to jinx it. I said, it seems like they haven't lost their fight, but it's just, it's just mental lapses. Things that it's could be avoided. Things. Trap it in the corners, Bristol. Nice. Craven Play with the Freeman steal. Going to get it up to Santos. There you go. There you oh, go. nice move there by Santos to avoid Suavez to lay it in. Finally, a fast break that worked out for them. This is the closest that Bristol has been since the early going. They're within eight. Coming up on seven minutes to play. Oh, Lopes, oh, Lopes, missed, Lopes went for the steal and missed it in the pace for it. The jumper is good. 62 to 52. Back to 10 point lead. Lopes comes to set a screen. Henry's fine to the basket. Freeman driving to the basket and he's going to go to the free throw line again. That's 19 fouls on the Bulldogs, so actually 10. Just keep doing it. They call on everything this game. Yeah, Bristol is in the double bonus now. That's 10 team fouls on the Bulldogs, so Bulldogs can't keep their, keep, keep their hands to themselves, Megan. <laughs> so for, the, um, for about the last seven minutes here, the Bulldogs are going to be in the double bonus. They'll be shooting free throws from here on out. That's huge. They yes. need to make their free throws now. Those are key. Bayhawks has got to take advantage. Keep going to the basket and, and put, them, put the ball in the net. That easy. It is. Right? <laughs> you make it sound so easy. 62 to 53. What is it? Was it? What's the? Is it the Geico commercial? Or whatever. The K, a caveman can do it. Or something like that. <laughs> and Freeman misses another free throw. Gonna need to be able to make those down the stretch. Now the Bristol has to definitely force some turnovers here. But on the offensive end, they need to be more aggressive and start taking the ball to the rack. Well, I, like, I like how they're playing defensively. Going, going to the rack is oh, yeah. is, and he's going to get fouled. I think he's going to get fouled by a Lopes. Seems like Walker Hill is about to take the same mentality and just keep going to the, keep going to the net. Fouls on TJ Hendry. The scoreboard says that's his fifth. If that is his fifth, he's fouled out in this game. And Nathaniel's about to come back in. And they can't afford to lose TJ Hendry. I think he is done. And that hurts. I think TJ Hendry. He, if he's not fouled out, he's definitely up there in fouls. Bayhawks might be just playing it safe. And well, it says five fouls up there, so that could be that could be it. Mm -hmm. But we've seen the same thing in the earlier game when we thought a Tia Rivera fouled out. Yeah. And they were like, psych. <laughs> you can definitely feel the crowd is still in this one. Yeah, Bayhawks faithful getting into it. Usually the case when these two teams play. A lot of life in this gym today. This and Melvin Suavez buries both free throws. Bristol, oh. Bristol not dead yet, though. No. Down 11. Here's Stanley Freeman. Just can't abandon the inside game. Now that uh, Henry's out. And Gia crosses over, spins, gets to the rack. Aww. Oh, and a block. That was a nice play on Gia, though. Don't, don't get discouraged going in the basket. What a block by Edwards. Yes. Oh, that was a nice look by Gia. Just didn't have enough air. Six oh five to play. Just an 11-point lead, not insurmountable by any means, but the way that this game has gone, 11 points seems like 20 points right now. Bristol needs a burst. Taylor at the free throw line being surrounded by three Bayhawks. Bristol playing smothering defense, 13 on the shot clock. Three-pointer by Suavez, nails it. And those could be the final nails in the coffin. Man, 
And Gia crossing over. Oh, what a oh, block there by Taylor. Daniel. There you go, nice find. And G, oh, Nate G, good job. Nice up fake there, way to use his body. Way to get the defender up in the air. Nice composure, nice find by Angia. I thought he had it the first time, but he recognized it after the second time after he got the rebound. But what about Nate G, the, the, the minutes that he's given this team? and Definitely, even though he didn't, he didn't start this game, he's definitely uh, stepping up as a role player. Definitely stepping up in his role, and, and uh, when he's got opportunities, he's made the best of it, that's for sure. Good job there, nice up fake, good fundamentals to not get that shot blocked there by a more athletic big. Yeah. He definitely you know? brings up a physicality under the, under the basket. Definitely. So what do you think this? Another guy that you hate, you know, you, you hate him if he's on the other team, but you love him if he's on your team, just yes. like an aggravator, you know. So if you're a, if a you, hustler. If you're the Bayhawk coach, what are you telling your team right now? If I'm Coach Brian Fernandez right now, I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of time. You don't, there's not, there's no 12-point shot out there. You have to, you have to cut it, you have to chip into this little by little. Right now, again, the um, Bulldogs at a little bit of a disadvantage. They're, they are in the double, they are in the penalty. They are in the double bonus. You can take it at them. Referees have been playing, they've been carrying a tight ship. They've been, um, you know, basically carrying a tight ship out there today. They've been blowing the whistle. Start getting the ball into the paint. I completely agree. Start driving to the basket, get some fouls, slow the game down. See, if I was if I was Bunker Hills coach, I would tell them, look, take your time, milk out the clock, and just put your hands up. Try not try not to foul. Just yeah. I mean, the Bulldogs haven't played that much of an efficient game, but they've hit big shots when they needed to. They have always been, I feel like, consistent defensively. Yeah. I think I think their offense has been more fluid too. Driving to the basket. Oh. Uh. Should have had a box out there. Had the initial block, but then uh, Quincy Taylor with the second chance opportunity. Freeman, nice, nice job to get the Back angle there, but uh, the miss. And you could feel this one starting to slip, slip away from the Bayhawks. Suavis all the way to the basket, so fast. Bayhawks are losing a little bit of urgency here. Bunker Hill Community College Bulldogs, they always seem over the last five or six years that I've been covering them, they always seem to have a floor general who just makes a smart play, makes the right pass, yeah. finishes, at the, finishes at the rim, just a sound floor general. They've always had one of those point guards. Well, I know they made, a, they, made, they made a couple mistakes this game, but it seemed like they didn't really run out of too much stamina. They always had energy. Yeah. Always trying to take, even if they didn't get and it. And there's an easy put in, and this one's starting to get away. Even if they weren't getting uh, the, bas the ball in the basket, they still didn't let it discourage them from going inside. I mean, that's the coach over there. That's the coach over there. And Nakruma, I mean, Nakruma Jones, who's been there for a while, is taking his team to national tournaments. Three-pointer by nice. and Gia. And Gia's Don't go away yet. And Gia's doing whatever he can to get his team back in the game. Timeout on the floor. 404 to play here, 73 to 58. We're going to take a quick break here on FRC Media, your Bayhawks Broadcasting Network. I always knew I wanted to go to college. I just didn't know how or when. Bristol gave me the flexibility to balance work, family life, and the things I love to do. I was able to transfer and get a bachelor's degree in the field I am passionate about. Bristol helped me so I can help others. Working as a mentor and a coach, I know I'm making a difference. And I'm able to show my kids and others the value of a college education. It's never too late. Your dreams are within reach at Bristol Community College. Welcome back, everybody, to LaFrance Gymnasium, 73-58. to 58. This one not over yet, but time slipping away. And 15-point league. This has basically been all Bunker Hill. I mean... Can't really say that no. because first half was Bristol, Bristol, the first five minutes they had a 10 2 lead. Chad and Gia was hot from three point land. You know, so from, you know, after the first few minutes though, it's been all Bunker Hill. It's control. been all Bunker Hill. Once Bunker Hill took the lead, they never looked back. And Bristol has tried to chip away into this thing. They've gotten to within eight points, but, you know, Bunker Hill's always responded after that, mm -hmm. or Bristol's had a chance to cut into the lead more. 
key turnover, missed easy bunny, couple lapses in play, you know, Bunker Hills just um, capitalized on those things and Melvin Suaves with a couple key shots, key threes, number two, the point guard. You know, every time that Bristol tries to cut back into this game, Bunker Hill does something to kind of stomp on their throat. I feel like you can definitely see the advantage of speed in Bunker Hill's favor. They're just able to play faster and make decisions more fa quick quickly. Well, when the Bayhawks try to do it, they end up making a mistake. Yeah, a little bit too many mistakes. I think you could say that same thing about the women's game earlier. Yes. But Bristol still has a chance to cut into this thing. Don't say die. And Gia might be looking to get back in this game. Come on, Bristol. Mama mentality. We're number 24. That's it. Lopes. Oh, nice, nice move there by Lopes. Lopes. Cuts it to within 13. 3.39 to play. Wakes now up the if you're crowd. Bristol, yeah, wakes the crowd up. Now if you're Bristol, you get to turn up the defensive intensity. You need a steal, you need to stop. Now you need stops. Nice play by Lopes being physical and inside. Going underneath it. Quincy Taylor's just been too strong. He's been too good for them. They can't find an answer to stop that right now. Well, Henry's out, so they don't have the, si the size right yeah, now. Yeah, they don't have up. someone to match up with that. Oh, and Gia nice. for three. Ooh. Can't get it to fall. They needed that one. That looked like that was going in. Yeah. He left his hands. Yeah, from that standpoint, it did. But but Chet and Gia just hasn't, hasn't found it tonight. Tavares, no good. Tipped. But Santos gets it going the other way. That's been the story of the game for the Bayhawks. Um, Looks promising, oh. but. Oh, bouncing out. Lopes kicks it back out. Pufong for three. No good. Lopes in the paint. Jumper is good. Timeout on the floor. We'll keep it here. 13 again. I feel like we're in the, this is like we're in the same spot uh, where the women's game was with a little bit less than three minutes to play. Around a 12, 13 point lead. If they not a terrible, not like an insurmountable, like getting destroyed, but just enough where it's just like, it's just out of reach. Yeah, yeah. Little, <laughs> just out of reach. I feel like if they can get a couple quick steals here and get the game to single dig digits before it hits the two point mark, it will not be easy. They have a chance. Well, they need to get a, well, yeah. yeah. They need to get a stop here. I mean, You're talking about two back to back threes, two yeah. quick stops, it's possible, but definitely take a lot from the Bayhawks and a couple uh, mishaps from Bunker Hill. A couple. A couple yeah. <laughs> like 10. <laughs> they need like 10 mishaps. <laughs> but they got 10 uh, fouls. Yeah. Well, we've seen stranger, seen stranger things happen in this building, so. Seen 12, you've seen 11 or 12 point leads fall and another timeout on the floor. That's a little strange back to that timeout. All right, stay with us this Thursday. The Bristol Community College women's basketball team, Thursday night basketball. The Lady Bayhawks are in action, 6 p.m. on Thursday night against the University of Connecticut at Avery Point, the pointers. In the pressure cooker. Yeah, it is, I don't care. It is the pressure <laughs> cooker tonight. It's balmy. Feels like Miami in here. I don't think I'll be able to get a tan. Who's, who's your pick for the Super Bowl? Uh, I, w I want it to be a I, – I can't pick because I, I really don't want neither team to win. <laughs> we're going to hear about Jimmy Garoppolo of San Francisco wins, and we're going to hear from Kansas City fans how well, they're a new it's, team. It's pick your poison. Exactly. Uh, I would have I'm to say. I'm for Jimmy G. Jimmy G. I'm for can't Kansas hate City. the man. Can't hate the man. No, I don't. I don't hate the man. I just hate the. I think the coverage around it. If he wins the Super Bowl, apparently it's a mistake by the Patriots. <laughs> oh yeah. Bayhawks with full court pressure. Playing man to man. Looks like they're matching up man to man right now. Can't stick with that man all the way to the rack. Unbelievable. He's just unstoppable. Too much speed. He's got handle like Kyrie. Yeah. I mean, he's got speed like anybody. Oh, nice crossover by Freeman. Oh, I just can't control But just the ball a block. There. This guy's way too fast. Yeah. Oh, he can bump into his own players. His own players are. I mean, they just haven't been able to stay in front of Milton Suavez. I mean, he gets to where he wants to go. And huh? despite not being the tallest guy or the longest guy, I mean, he's just, he gets to the rack. And, I mean, he just explodes and he just finishes. I'm surprised he, they, uh, Bunker Hill hasn't tried to use that to advantage earlier in, a, in this half and get more uh, more fouls. 
definitely trying to take advantage of it towards the end of the game to put the game away. Advantage of? Just his speed and be able to get to the basket. I think so. I think he's been dominating. I think he's been the different the difference. Yes. I mean, he's just been a, a force out there. Unfortunately, uh, Bayhawks has no one with that type of speed to match up against them. And and you can't quick, deny you can't deny the Bulldogs defense too. They've had good no. defense and G has been quiet. I mean, look at I mean they've everything that's going in. We talked about I talked about Bristol trying to get into the paint and get to the rack. Yes. But the Bulldogs have been there to to block shots, no to ones. sway shots. Yeah, they've been able to clog the paint up. They had definitely haven't been making it easy for Bristol. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like it's the other way around. Just just Bunker Hill has been yeah. able to uh get more block yeah. In the and Bristol hasn't been able to finish at the rim no. because of the defense of the Bulldogs and another easy layup there. You can tell uh, this time by number 21. You can you can see the enthusiasm and Devontae Dennis hope. off the bench. Three pointer by Freeman, short. And this one getting away from Bristol. And uh, after that win on Saturday, a win that I mean that Bristol gave everything in that game. Seems on like a Saturday afternoon yes. where there was like five people here. <laughs> now, a little bit of a more of a crowd, bigger stage. Three-point shot mm -hmm. by Suavez, and I believe they're going to call a foul on the three. Well, it, seems like, uh, it seems like the Bayhawks were giving everything they have to, for the, in the first quarter. Just let the game slip away from them in the second. Yeah, well, I mean, they've had their moments, and they just, you know, they I think they tired out towards the end. They didn't really go too deep in their bench. I think it was uh, maybe seven players. Is this thing? Okay. Well, right now, I mean, you're looking at their team. I mean, they're not that deep. No. And we haven't seen Brendan Narciss today. Um, he's been absent. A B A A B A B Madrano. Why we say that? Is, more um, best players are coming in. Yeah, A B Madrano. He's been um, he's been absent for Sean Nairney. I mean Nairn. These are guys that they're missing. These are key contributors in the first half of the season. We were talking two days ago as the the key of depth and how you need depth to go far in the playoffs. So if one player gets injured or De definitely helps. Here comes pro. And Gia going up. And nice. Little gets late. it to go. I'm surprised he's still in the game. They haven't taken him out. Only 58, 58 seconds. Seems like this game's out of reach. Well, I think you keep playing to the you know, you keep playing to the end, right? Yeah, but they brought in some bench players, so I think they know it's over, but surprised they I keep mean, Gia in. Tejon Hendry has fouled out of this game. Santos is out. I mean, it is what it is. Their bench doesn't go that deep right now. Freeman's out, too. Well, Freeman's out of the game now. Yeah. Um, it's going game. away. And there's Brendan. There's Brendan Narciss. I was talking about where, where, he, where he was. And the putback I thought he had, by Angia a little bit too late now. I thought he played a couple good minutes on Thursday night. Surprised he didn't get much more of a role. Yeah, tonight. we haven't seen him out there as much today. Definitely uh, showcasing the last couple seconds here. It's point to uh, get more minutes. Yeah. Bring some intensity on the defensive side. Put back. Put back by Devante Dennis. Final seconds are going to come off the clock here. Narcissus for three and drains it. And that's going to be it. 85 to 69 See, is our final score here from LaFrance Gymnasium. I want to thank our Facebook audience for tuning in once again. We will be back on Thursday for some Thursday night basketball. The women's Bayhawks team in action against UCAP, University of Connecticut at Avery Point. So doubleheader today. Bayhawks lose in both games. And Megan, who is our Bristol uh, Bayhawks are men's player of the game. I would have to give it to, I like the way Lopes play, but I have to give it to Freeman. 
he was more he was more aggressive I think throughout the game and he used the facilitator getting be able to get the balls on the side and I think the, that's the reason why they got all the way up to eight fouls in the second half ten fouls in the yeah, I mean, Stanley Freeman, you can never go wrong with that. I mean, he's a heart and soul, and he's a the only returning uh, starter from last year's team. So Stanley Freeman is our Bayhawks player of the game. And I also believe he was the leading scorer. He was leading scorer in the second half, coming second half with, I think, 14 points. All right. Well, no, there he was in Gia. No, he was second leading scorer. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you again for, another, uh, for tuning in to another Bayhawks telecast. Again, we'll be back Thursday for more Bayhawks basketball. Uh, tune in at 6 p.m. All right, so for David Cardoza and Megan, uh, Holden. Megan Holden. All right, you've been watching Bayhawks basketball here on FRC Media. Good night, everybody, from the France Gymnasium in Fall River, Mass. Good night.